Hey YouTube, I just wanted to shout out a quick video response to Benjamin in his documentary, Becoming YouTube. I want to commend him for actually taking the time to document what actually creates YouTube and who are the people behind it and what drives a lot of the underground side of YouTube to work in the way that it does. But in watching this video, there were a few things that came to mind. Now, I should first start off by saying I'm not a big producer of YouTube videos. I don't have a lot of subscribers. I don't get a lot of views. In fact, I don't think I've really gotten any likes or comments on any of my videos, but that's not what I go for. I'm just kind of trying to produce a diary. Like I think one of the people in the video indicated, I just like to say what's going on and what's happening. But for me as a software engineer, when I look at YouTube, I, I can see clearly what are the different parties and how are they involved in the business side of creating a website. Um, that's part of being a software engineer, working with web applications, you quickly learn that there's an important component of building revenue to pay people's salaries. Um, websites don't come free. So that being said, I wanted just to take a few moments to um, analyze some of the parties that I see in play. Um, I find it really, co I, I'm assuming that it's kind of coincidental that this video came out around the time of the new YouTube layout. It's certainly changed and raised a lot of eyebrows from a lot of YouTubers. I've seen a lot of people kind of having a little bit of backlash. However, let, let's just dive into how I'm slicing up YouTube. So the first thing you have, the most important part are the viewers because they drive your traffic and they can be sliced up into a few categories. The first category is your random anonymous person who does not have a user account who comes into YouTube. They are coming here because they wanted to watch some cat doing some funny little act or they wanted to watch some guy getting hit by a baseball bat or some insane um, video. Then you have, you'll have your people that have their Google accounts and they are in fact users, but they are users because of the fact that they are open through open authentication, which is a technology that uses your Google account to authenticate you into YouTube. They're not exactly intending to have an account. They're not intending to subscribe to videos. They're not intending to push videos, but they still are a YouTube user by virtual de facto of that account. And then your third category is the YouTubers that do have subscriptions. They may or may not produce videos, but in fact, they are involved in the social underpinning of YouTube. They post comments, they do likes and dislikes, and they are part of the vlogosphere, or at least they're watching the vlogosphere. Now, the second major component of YouTube is the content producers. And like the viewers, there are a few subcategories within that. The first subcategory would be the major producers, the major companies, this could be McDonald's, this could be Lady Gaga, but these are major corporations who are using YouTube to push some of their already existing product lines which produce revenue on their own. These are individuals who are, or companies who are largely successful with or without YouTube. The second one are people who are just pushing videos up to YouTube to be a repository for things they may or may not have seen. It's not necessarily telling a story. It's not for the purpose of producing a video. It could be what I saw last night on Bill Maher's Real Time. It could be what I saw on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. But it's not exactly for the purpose of telling a story. And then the third one is obviously the people who are using YouTube as a creative platform. And it's sort of a primary component of what they're doing um, to push themselves forward. And I feel like, you know, that's one of the coolest components of YouTube. It's certainly the one I get the most enjoyment from seeing. However, um, sometimes it seems like over the past few years it's become way more difficult to even find that content. As the battle to gain subscribers has become more difficult, the battle to find people to subscribe to, to find new people has become a little bit more difficult. Now it seems like I've seen a lot of some of the same old faces, which is great, and they've gotten a lot better at what they do. However, it has become difficult to find new people. Um, there have been some really great YouTubers in the past that have just kind of fallen off. 
And I can't short them. I know life happens. You know, things go on and you don't exactly have time to produce videos. I know I wanted to produce videos for a long time and I was in college and given finals and exams and studying and everything, it really was difficult to find the time to do that. So we have the viewers and then we have producers, but there's also a really third important element and that is the software engineers. And a lot of people feel like, well, YouTube doesn't listen to us. And I feel that they do. However, it's important to note that running a website such as YouTube is expensive. It's really expensive. Not only do you have to have world-class hardware, tons of computers, you have to have world-class data centers, you also have to pay for world-class talent and labor. Let's look at Google, who is the parent company of YouTube. Look at where they have their offices. They're in New York, Austin, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Los Angeles, California, London, England, and San Francisco, California. Now, I know London is very expensive, so I'm pretty sure that anybody on YouTube that lives in London that can produce a video would probably tell you that it's not the cheapest part of England to be located in. Now, let's go back to the United States. Of the offices that I listed of Google that are um, around here, Atlanta and Austin are probably the most affordable of the ones that they own. And that being because rent isn't so sky high, you don't have to pay through the nose to live there. San Francisco, on the other hand, is quite expensive. Now, San Francisco is Silicon Valley, and Silicon Valley, they kind of work together, and there's lots of tech companies around here. And there's lots of professional people around here. And it's a relatively small space, it's densely populated, and therefore, um, people are going to need high rent. They're going to have to pay high rent, which means they're going to need higher salaries. So for 10, let's say you wanted to hire 10 engineers, just to pay their salaries, that's not even taken into account the taxes. You're probably going to pay at least a million dollars just for 10 of them. And with the taxes involved, it's going to be one and a half million dollars. That's just for 10. And that doesn't include the software architects, the system engineers, the system administrators, the technical support gurus that have to go and make sure that your experience is great, the quality engineers, the marketing people, the product managers that determine what is it that you like, how do you click, what do the analytics show about what produces the most revenue for us. And it is true that YouTube over the past few years has shifted their model to promote advertisers a little bit more, but it's critical in the fact that they have to be profitable. They have to be able to send their developers home with paychecks. They do have shareholders. And sometimes it does lead to the question, is it YouTube anymore? Because YouTube lends itself to that idea of it's you, it's me. We're having our conversation, we're having our individuals, our, our individual productions talking about our lives, but when in fact there are a lot of big players that don't exactly represent you or me, they kind of represent big business, big people that otherwise would already be present and have really cool, um, I or they have really large income streams. But anyway, that's just pretty a rough response to one of the, some of the things that came to mind in watching this video. Um, hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, I usually don't say um, like, comment, or subscribe because I don't want to beg people. But if you want to come check out my video, my channel, please do. Right now, I'm just really talking about what it's like to live in San Francisco. I just moved here, I guess, uh, a few months ago. I'm a software engineer. I work for a travel company. We do lots of apps and that kind of stuff. But anyway, thanks so much to Benjamin for posting this video, and catch you guys later. Bye.